Puppy, let's march. There we go, a little bit of a rocky start, but you're getting the hang of it. This is a meme in the making. Or should I say a don't forget meme? Hey everybody, it's Chuck a Con. Oh, they turned away from me when I said- <laughs> Ahem, I said- Wow, no sense of humor, these military types. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 2! Last time we got a lead on where that artificial blade Lila might have come from! Seems to have some relation to Tora's dark and gritty past. Seriously, every single Nopon has some kind of tragic backstory or they're horribly greedy. None of you just have happy lives! <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't know, it, it seems like a requirement that no Nopon is allowed to just be happy. This time, I probably better actually put uh, Rex and Nia back into the group. I briefly touched on this before, but you can press X to exclude or include characters from the party. Uh, having one or three party members, it has a lot more potential for funny stuff. Uh, notice board. Ah, this is help sought from, bra uh, from the brave for an important ecological survey. Place, thermal exhaust fork. Task, culling of nuke vangs and recovery of three white scale antennae. Please report to Joblin at uh, Hard Hay Palace on completion. We're gonna be accepting two side quests right now because they take us they uh, take us to places that are on the way to where we're going on the lower level of the Titan. Uh, further, Hansatra, 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 you are the correct person. Tora want to hear gossip. Well met followers, and have I got news for you. Oh, so the Imperial Armor recently caught a spy. A spy who'd stolen some top secret intelligence. Question time, where do you think they hid it? Buried in the ground, inside their stomach, in the cloud sea. It's always the dumb answer! In an excellent guess. That's kind of disturbing. Oh, but not inside their own stomach, a monster stomach. Put the, do put the documents in a steel box and then gulp. And then the monster was, drumroll, Nuke Skeeter. Doesn't that thing have a belly that's like two inches in diameter? Only thing is, you know freely, uh, you know how freely those monsters fly across the Ardanian skies. The Nuke Skeeter that swallowed the documents got mixed in with the flock, and now we don't know which one it is. There's a pretty big prize riding on it, but taking down even one is a process. Cost, benefit, you know. Dude, they're bugs. Anywho, that's a story. Uh, a request of big effort, no takers. Oh, I see. If you don't feel if you feel like doing it, I'm not gonna stop you. Defeat the nuke skeeters and recover the documents. Then head over to the, to the soldier at Harhe Palace uh, Gatehouse to get your reward. Thanks. Oh yeah. You might be able to tell which nuke skeeter swallowed the documents. With that thing in its stomach, it might be feeling a wee bit crabbit. Ah, but uh, you might have to be watching for a pretty long time. Hard to stomach. Get it? The steel box is hard, and it went to stomach. Yeah, it works on so many levels. Two of them. Our destination is on the lower level, but in a higher place that we've never been to. To go there, because the maps just don't like making your life easy, upper level. Afuma! Care to give me some affumation? Hey there! To reach the old factory, you'll want to head down the side path on the left through the old industrial district. The factory in that whole district has been out of use for a long time, so there might be infested with monsters. We'll keep that in mind, but where we're really going is up this way. All right, now the time has finally come, and I didn't think it would be in these battles, but we're finally gonna get to see all that Mithra is capable of. Since the time has come, I thought we could get to know a little bit more about the girl, as she is quite, um, interesting. For one, she is not fully developed. She's only level two, after all. We need to get her trust up so that we can access some higher level skills. Like I said, um, oh, she needs to use Ray of Punishments more, so level one special. That's an easy one to knock out a lot. Uh, like I said, uh, I could have done more quests with her earlier, but, you know, she's Mithra, she's powerful, and I kind of felt like other Blades could use it more, but it is still exciting that we're getting to see, uh, at least something with her now. Mithra is based on, or rather is named after, a Zoroastrianism god named Mithra, with an I. This is a god of water and is seen as somewhat of a protector, but not a lot is really known about this Mithra due to lack of recovered texts. Either way, I think it's a cool name. It's a lot better than her Japanese name in my opinion, which is Hikari. It's a clever pun, I guess, with Hikari meaning light and also being a girl's name. I just think it's a bit standard because I've seen so many Hikaris in fiction that use the exact same pun. Um, I, I just think this one suits her a lot better. It's a lot more mystical sounding, a lot more mythical sounding, if you will. 
And that also brings me to something else. Blades often have different names in Japanese. It's one of the very few things that got changed in localization. I think this is fine. It's just that a lot of blades are puns on Japanese words, and they got changed to puns of English words. I think that that's fine. The drivers mostly got left alone, as did the other characters. All right, so Mithra. With all that done, Mithra is all about the buffs. That becomes apparent right away with her first battle skill, Glint, which boosts her critical hit ratio. Pyra and Mithra, contrary to popular belief, actually have the same base stats. Mithra is only known for her critical hits because of this skill. It's a pretty big help for her and makes her a much, much stronger blade than she would be otherwise. This is getting bad. I'm keeping aggro. That's not good. Her second battle skill. Oh, break. Good. Her second battle skill is one of her most defining characteristics. Lightspeed Flurry. Recharges art or specially used upon landing a critical hit. With her high critical hit rate and the fact that this in the upper levels can even reach 100% recharge, it makes her into a powerful art spammer and able to achieve such super strong DPS. Also, with her getting critical hits so often and her specials being AoE, we're landing critical hits just like mad here on this group of enemies. Our party gauge is going up with every single critical hit and that saved us right there. It seems like she would have trouble because she gets the aggro really fast with all these AoE attacks hitting for so much damage. But that brings in her third skill. It's called Foresight. This increases accuracy and evasion of the entire team at max affinity. This multiplies these stats and it works amazing with high agility stats. This is why I said that Rexterity would stop being a problem after a while. Mithra just fixes Rex all on her own. She's that good. Now, there was that whole blurb earlier about how Mithra's power is tough to use in tight spaces and how you can't really use it in all situations. And you might think that that is right now because there's an overhang and we're kind of indoors. No, there's no such mechanic that makes her weaker indoors. Her only nerf is that her level four special will not charge up unless there's a clear view of the sky. Back during my first playthrough, I avoided using Mithra indoors because I thought it was telling me that she was bad indoors. Seriously, the bad tutorials are bleeding into the characters themselves now. The, the tutorial man's rubbing off on Pyra. Anyway, Mithra in summary. She's a very strong art spammer thanks to her critical recharge and high critical hit rate. She builds the party gauge exceedingly fast thanks to those traits, and I can't say enough good about that. Um, if it seems like Pyro was hitting for more damage than Mithra, she might have had a higher auto attack stat due to that being based on trust and Mithra starting at level 1. But give Mithra a little time, she'll catch up. Foresight helping the entire team is something that I can't stress enough in being helpful. Anything that buffs the entire team tends to be very good. I can't think of a single buff like that that isn't worth carrying into a fight. And it can make other evasion-based blades near unhittable when it really gets going in those higher levels. Common themes about Mithra are that her specials tend to have huge AoE. She has pierce damage in some of her specials, which are really good. And all four of her specials are ether based so no worrying about using the wrong special. I wish they were all like this. Pretty much the only actual downsides about Mithra that I can even name would be her having two Oxcore slots instead of three, but I give her a pass on that because she needed to have something that wasn't super good. If we want to talk downside, downside, she gives 10% more Aether her, to her driver, but only 5% more defense and 10% Aether defense. Thanks to that, she has some of the worst defenses of any blade out there. Even though she can avoid attacks like nobody's business, that is still bad when she does get hit. She will take... She will cause a Rex to take a beat. Level up's all about long fight. Ray of punishment level two. Anything else, Mithra? Here I was thinking like, oh, it's kind of lame that we just have these regular enemies to deal with and then that's it. But no, that was actually pretty cool. There's no need to do any further exploration down here, but there was this whole nuclear reactor hole in the Titan's shoulder thing that I wanted to go look at. This place is awfully big. There's this great big old ring around everything down this mine elevator. And if we walk around it enough... Elisat wants to fight us to the death. Around on the other side of it, there's just... I'm... It's so hot. Like, the Titan's running a fever, I think is what he said. I'm gonna assume that you're some kind of power plant worker and supposed to be here and not somebody bent on blowing up the Titan on behalf of a terrorist organization, because... 
I mean, for all I know, you could be either of those things. And then I think up this ladder right near this chest is where this thing is that I want to go check out. Wow, this is long. At least the view's nice. Up on top, there's a ladder that's too long for some reason clipping through the bottom of that. Are they even trying? <laughs> I unironically love that literally unplayable thing where sometimes it's serious, sometimes it's a joke, and it's just kind of oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, especially when there's older games and people are posting glitches in re-releases of them being like, oh, come on, like, seriously, this is such a bad remake. And I'm like, bro, this happened in the original version. I even have footage of it on my channel. Uh, is there... <laughs> level 9 Dark Mastery and level 5 Ancient Wisdom. No thanks. Up and out of that shaft, it's... Pretty clever, actually, that they use geothermal power to, uh, you know, power all of this technology, okay. given that their Titan is kind of on its last legs. There are nuke skeeters right outside here. One of these is the correct one, though I don't really know which one it is without stopping and looking at their flight patterns for a while, so I'm just gonna take them all out, because why wouldn't I? They are level 31. These guys are stronger than I remember them being, so I can't really get on them too much for not being able to deal with them. Though I still think it is kind of funny that they don't just... It was the first one I attacked, of course. Must have sent Sometimes I'm just very lucky, you know? If you haven't taken care of those Fabel Bufas that Dromark wants to take out, they're right next to these Nuke Skeeters, and it pairs well with this quest as a result. In case you want to die by a facial in every country in this world, here is your opportunity now. Uh, that didn't hurt as... Wow, why did the more ordained facials not hurt as much as the Gormati ones? Oh, that's cool! If you listen carefully, you can actually hear him playing the instrument! He's right by the music shop, too! I like that! Hard Hay Palace! I bet their hay is really hard with how dry the air is around here. I need to stop giving pun names to every- uh, just trying to, like, make dumb jokes out of every single name and everything ever. Sometimes you can just enjoy things for what they are, you know? Not everything's gotta be that way. Both of these quests... Alistair? Hello, citizen. Something the matter. Here you go. This! Where did you- So the thing is... Oh, I see. You went to all that trouble. I shudder to think what might happen if this information got into the other country's hands. If Emperor Nile and Special Inquisitor Morag's past schedules became public knowledge, they'd be in deep water. Oop, pardon. I overstepped. Uh, you heard nothing. They're always golfing instead of doing their actual diplomatic duties. Uh, you have been a great help. Really, you have. Thank you very much. This is your award. Please take it. Thanks. That's one down. And the more overdue quest by about 15 seconds since we accepted it. Joblin, here you go. Oh, these are white scale antennae, are they not? And uh, exactly three, no less. Excellent. Perhaps you saw the flyer? Yep. Uh, I see. Well, it's a big help. I'm, I'm engaged in the research of our Ardanian fauna, you see. Naturally, that requires a certain amount of hands-on work in the relevant locations. But sadly, I don't really have the time on required material- uh, required mar- Martial ability? Oh, or, or required martial abilities to visit the thermal exhaust fork. Uh, my hands are uh, full with researching a range of life forms. Unfortunately, the humble Nuke Vang has low priority. Uh, however, if you have the white scale antennae for the Nuke Vang, uh, then it's enough for a basic report. If the information contained in, the, in my report uh, disseminated throughout the military, then no doubt it'll make the job of taking on these wretched Nuke Vangs quite a bit easier. All right. Well, I should get back to work on my report. Oh, and uh, here's your award. I'm very glad that you responded to my request, so thanks again. Ardanians confirm nicer than Nopon. When he forgets our award, he actually does pay us back in the same conversation. Ecological survey also done. Just some gold, some experience, and some SP. Not a whole lot of anything. I've decided to change what I'm giving Rex. That increased power at the start of a chain attack from ultimate relay is good. But I also like topple champ. Extending the duration of a topple by 15%. And with Mithra just being such an art spammer, yeah, we could... It's not really that important to get the rapid attack skills to have an art at the beginning of a fight. I really only ever need one, but we could take it, I guess. Nice one. And to adjust with that, Rolling Smash should probably be our X art, just so we can reduce aggro if need be early in a fight. And sure, that can go up to level three. 
So we have our course charted. It's gonna be here on the lower level. And we were told to go through the old industrial district on the upper level and make our way down from there. We could go that way. But because we've been exploring so much, we can go to Angam, Anangam Dock number two, Anangam number two dock. What is it with this one location? I cannot remotely say the name of to save my life. Anangam number two dock. Port Anangam, there we go. I'd have to focus so hard on saying it because I just can't do it otherwise. Oh, Timel, we've heard of, we uh, helped you earlier. Have you heard anything interesting lately? You know there is a gate that's always shut tight here in Port Anangam? Uh, that gate leads to an area called the Chanza, uh, Chanza Wastes. Uh, we keep it shut to ward off dangerous monsters. You could visit the waste yourself if you're looking for a challenge, but if you're not up to it, I'd steer well clear. There are two ways to get to this objective and it's up to you which one you want. In the Fife of Forgetfulness, which we visited during Tranquility, we got a key that is used to open this gate. On the other side of it, are the strongest enemies we've seen yet, regular enemies that are in the 80s. And I believe there's even some unique monsters out this way too. If we go over by these Ardens, however, there is a salvage point that looks a little bit safer, I suppose. Oh, I can't Where'd you go? Oh, <laughs> I missed you. Yo. Huh. Ah. Right. How fitting for Rex. This looks like it'll be something good. Sorry, 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 sorry. Why is everything not spawning in? No enemies? Okay, I'll take it. Treasure acquired. Cool. All right. All right. Oh, I love the smell of salvage. Uh oh. No! Oh boy! All right. Well, let's see if the true power of the Aegis can stand up to. Nuka Aspid. It doesn't sound as threatening as it looks, I'll give it that. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Let's get some foresight going. We gotta get up to our affinity max. I'm gonna open up with light here, hopefully combo into myself by going from level one to level two into level three. Mithra is just so good that she's able to do that in a lot of cases. I really should have a launch art on me at least somewhere, but I don't. Don't quite get my critical recharge to get my arts all the way back up. Shackle drive. Um, I'm gonna keep Mithra out for foresight. Back attack. Nia's got us covered with this combo finisher if we don't. I'd really love it if she could use break right now so that I can topple before switching off a of Mithra. I don't want to switch off Mithra because her evasion's good. That's actually something that I think a lot of people make a mistake on and kind of gives more credence to that whole strategy of having less than three blades on. Um, a lot of people seem to think that they need to be switching blades to keep the pressure on and all that. And if you're a tank, maybe that's true. But a lot of blades like Mithra here have such good buffs on them that it actually can make sense to just stay on one blade or only have like two that you switch between or only switching off if you need a specific blade or driver combo. It's really easy to get caught up in switching blades to just keep art spamming, but it's not at all necessary. Uh, Percy? Percy boy, I haven't seen you in a while. We'll go ahead and break ya. Break him, it's weird how breakdown is not his break art. No, uh, nobody gonna topple? Nobody gonna topple? Now without Mithra, you really see the difference here? I'm taking loads more damage than I was before. Oh, of course she does it right when I do it. Do it at the same time, we're just so alike. I wish I had a fire blade on me, but Nia, if you could make that happen, that would be great. I want two orbs before I chain attack this thing if I can. Burn out, good. And then Mithra, you're gonna come out with a nuclear blast. Seals affinity down. Those are effects that make it so that your affinity goes down, not making it so that you can't lose affinity. No! Come on, uh, let's just not care about the level four special, even though it's cool looking. Like I said, the level three special is just so much better. All of that charge lost from waiting for it. It sucks when you wait for it and don't get it. Here we go. Me first. Well, I'm very aware of not having a fire blade, but I do have a dark blade. No matter what, I will break an orb this round. Let's keep 
it off. Magnificent. Go for it. Blade Vortex. Magnificent. Begin. Tora, wow, that was a big Tora, amount of damage. At your service. Magnificent. Let's keep it up. Magnificent. Mithra. Just let me handle it. No, you fight Magnificent. And from Tora not having another blade, we just instantly lose out on the rest of our chain attack. Awesome! But we all leveled up. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was really afraid of that. <laughs> You're all mine. I feel I am learning a great many things. Ancient Wisdom level 3 for old Bromark. I would describe this route that we've taken here as the more straightforward. There is a straight trail to where we're going. It's just simply follow this trail north. But it's more challenging in the sense that you have to avoid tougher enemies. The trail that we're going to be taking instead of this one by going up north has more things along it. It's more complicated. But I think there's more rewarding items to be gained from it. There's just a lot more to do in general, but it is more confusing to navigate. To the upper level we go. No need to explore further. You're done. Off we go. What will we find? What will we find indeed as we go down into the geothermal processor? This whole abandoned building section of Moor Ordain, uh, this is going to be our home for a while. It's rather complicated, and again, the map is not that helpful. I hate to say it, but it's really not. There's all these different layers to it. It's not really clear which lines belong on which layer and all that come crap. On, come on. But we can navigate it some way or another. Wow, I didn't think we were going to actually get the day music here. I should have really been looking up at the clock. Uh, first off, I want to go back this way. Open up this door. And as we go back here, probably going to have to deal with you. Put forward, Rex. Mind you don't fall like well done. Magnificent. Enemy down. No oh, hesitation, Rex. Teamwork requires oh, you to react all. swiftly. Got it? That's like something Van Damme would say. Ah, oh, Rock, you make me feel things. Rock has it so rough. I see. Indeed. Rock rough, if you will. I... He is so cool. He has such a good design. And then just like, he seems like he's gonna be really important. He gets like those few cutscenes where we wake him up though, but he's just done nothing since then. I feel so sorry for the guy. Our Merc group got back in the meantime. I've got the supporting role covered. Most. Let me handle the support role. Wow, she just smacked down Ursula's oh, confidence. Interesting. I'm switching everybody over to indoor attack up because that matters here. All right, behind this door, who do we got? Ooh, maybe you're actually not the best choice for this. Uh, huh. Change in plans then. This is not a very good fight for Adenine. Instead, we'll be showing Agate for the first time. I hope I'll live up to your expectations. Agate is a great axe. This is a weapon that has slow but very powerful attacks and usually has a very high critical hit rate. If you ever look, pull any common blades that are axes, look for critical power effects on them that raise up their critical damage. They are exceptionally good if they have those. And it's yet another way that common blades are better than you think. Agate stats currently give her a 21% critical rate. Agate has two ox core slots. We'll give her the affinity max attack and I think an indoor attack up as well. Great axes have great access to driver combos. They give Nia a topple art, which is the only one that she gets from any weapon type. And they give a launch art to Rex, which is also quite rare. All right, well, axes are probably Nia's worst weapon class, aside from that topple art, but let's do it anyway. Ugh, having to sacrifice my healing to show this is gonna be rough, but we're gonna try it anyway. We're equal level, let's try it. So, Rhino Assault is a critical recharge um, art. That right away is gonna help us a lot, because look at how slow she is at swinging this thing. Nia ain't known for her biceps. She might be good at punching Rex, but I guess it doesn't have a lot of oomph behind it, so she does it often to make up for it. 
I'm gonna be saving my topple art here. I wanna wait for this to get broken. And Agate. She has Tiger's Eye Wrecker as her first battle skill. Increased damage to insect enemies. There aren't a lot of powerful enemies that are insects, so she's not particularly helpful there. Her second skill is a little bit better. Tanzanite Pursuer, I think? Yeah, Tanzanite Pursuer. I can never say this one right. I can never say anything right today. Uh, this is increased damage to toppled enemies. Given that she has a good topple art on Nia, that synergizes quite well. well. I don't know if I'd say she has a good topple art on Nia, but she does have a topple art on Nia, so that's one reason to have, uh, have her on this one. Uh, this thing's halfway dead already, wow. And it does have an elemental weakness to Earth when it gets enraged. That's kind of funny. Um, I'm gonna keep going. Look at how slowly this is going. This is just nothing. Uh, let's switch to Ursula and heal. We desperately need it. I'm not gonna be able to finish this. Her third battle skill, Razor Sharp Low Light, Low Light, Low Light, not really sure. I'm just doubting myself on every pronunciation right now, is increased damage uh, by the whole party when Agate and her driver are at max affinity together. This is a great effect. Any kind of universal damage increase across the entire party tends to be very powerful. These effects can only be a good thing. I never have any trouble with any of them. They can only help you, not hurt you. Switch back to Agate. Let's see her level three special. This does increased critical damage. Good, good special. Look at that damage. Axes of high critical rates, more good synergy in her kit. And the best way that I would describe her is just the her ability is a good reason to have her around. Even if she's not that strong on her own, even if she's pretty poor on Nia aside from the topple art, just by having her there, we were knocking out this enemy way faster than we probably would have otherwise. You know, it's actually kind of funny that we're seeing how good support effects are all at once here between Agate and Mithra in the same video. I wish I could say I intended that, but I really didn't. I meant to go over Adenine first. It just wasn't the right time. Fate had other plans. Enemy down. We got through it though. That had to smart. And we leveled up that really good skill while we were at it. Two of them actually. No, 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 no. I came in here to get the control room key. This is actually a required place that we have to go down. I think it might have been a medical ward at one point. Back where we open that door, there's all sorts of other doors for us to check behind. This one almost wasn't one of them because I thought it was locked because it wouldn't interface with it. Uh, we're just gonna go look around, lock from the other side, okay. I had a feeling that was coming. Speedrunner! Yep, this is what they look like. Here we see a speedrunner in its natural environment. A basement. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Alright, let's go. Uh, Photon? Since we just love parallels between Agate and Mithra, and I'm really stretching here, here is early concept art of what Agate looked like earlier in development. I get some real mysterious number seven vibes from it. Oh, and she also has Bear Smash as one of her normal arts doing increased damage to toppled enemies. She was leaning into this topple heavy playstyle so hard. Speaking of which, here's her level two special that, yep, does increase damage to toppled enemies. It's really, really good. Those pink chunks of whatever flying up. No, 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 what are you doing? No, uh, that's, that's what speedrunners do. They use cheap tactics when they otherwise wouldn't have been able to win. Uh, he uh, called for help of enemies right there. It's kind of lame. Her level two special is probably her most reliable move. I would almost always open with that if it's possible to topple the enemy, because her level one does increase damage to launched enemies! Speaking of launched enemies, uh, Aspars. They launch themselves into the air to do powerful attacks. If you can smash them while they're up there, though, you interrupt their attack. It's just hard to get the timing quite right. Guy crash, maybe? I know I'm not really going for a blade combo that I can finish here, though. Uh, how about no? Uh, I said how about no, not how about switch shift the target. All right, this one's locked from the other side too. I guess we're having to fight these guys. This guy's by himself, maybe he won't be so bad. And I'm also, oh, no, let's fight these guys first. One Agate level one special coming right up. Heliodor Passion, like I said, does increased damage to launch enemies. The problem with this is Agate does such good damage to topple the enemies and that stacks with her level two special. She already has something that she wants to do when the enemy is toppled and that's not go for a launch. It's still a decent attack and Agate does have a launch art on Rex. It's just insignificant if she has access to a topple art. I'll tell you what would make Agate better, having an arts recharge effect on Nia. Thank you. I didn't have that on because I was having so much of me like, ha ha, clatter tongue, settlers of Catan. 
We have to take you out to move on, so let's get going. Yes, even Dromark has made a lot better than this. So absolutely, Agat has some strong effects. The problem is that she's outclassed, and I'm actually kind of glad for that reason that she was one of our first blades. There's another Axe Blade, who will remain nameless for the time being, who has a super, super, super good effect that supports the entire party's damage. Thanks to that Blade's existence, there just isn't as much reason to really use Agate, but if she's all you got, then she's great. Honestly, really, really good. This enemy right now is doing, oh no, it actually got it off. I was trying to interrupt it. Skin upgrade, it sheds its skin, undoing all the damage that you did to it. Whenever that happens, use a level four special, use a chain attack, use anything that stops it from working. Dromark, how about you go? <laughs> Dramatic zoom in on his chest for some reason. These cameras and tight spots have been endlessly amusing. Shouldn't he say that when it's his turn? That not punished dialect has just got me thinking so much. 40,000 damage, not great, not bad either. If I can get off a break and then a topple and then a launch. Or you guys can do that. Or, it, wow, you guys really had this in the bag without me having to do anything. Rex, if you'd smash so kindly, please, I'd like some items. No, didn't get around to it. He was busy doing Percival special still. We're all amazing. So satisfying beating him that way, though. Fire and Wind Mastery. Unfortunately, Pyrite is just straight up treated as outside the party right now. So we don't get an unfair advantage on our Fire Mastery like we usually get in those checks. Oh, Rex doesn't have any Fire Blades except for Pyra. He really didn't want to cheat on her, I guess. So three and two. Okay, Rex, you're awakening a blade. You need one common Fire Blade to do this part. And thus you're, wait, Vess's Core Crystal's ready to be awakened, really? I don't remember seeing the notification for that. If it popped up earlier, I am so sorry that I missed it. And I'm sure you were shouting at me a lot for that, but wow, um, if you're anything like me, you were quite invested to see where that was going. We're gonna skip the awakening and just, er, not skip the awakening, view the awakening. I wish I could skip these awakenings though, but you never know when the cool thing might happen. I'm excited to open Vess's Core Crystal 2. I'm gonna wait on it a little longer until we have no more blades ahead of her that need to be gone over, soon. Looks like a dog. If he could be a hot dog, that'd be very liked by me. Yes, he's a hot dog! Let's prove I'm sorry, Pyra, he cheated on you with a bitch. Here we go. Intense. We make it to the Old Pipe Junction Corridor, and from here, I wanna go up the stairs. Access gate, it is locked. Everything is locked in this old place. I guess they didn't want anybody looting the place after they left, but little did they know, we could just melt the doors and we don't do this on every door for some reason. Inside here in the junction control room, I'll take you, get another common core crystal and an arts aggro boost. And then we can open this door from the other side, taking us back out here. We now have a nice convenient entrance that can allow us to go basically halfway into the dungeon at any time. That little uh, shed over there, that's where we entered from in the first place. Back inside, I want to jump down. Dromark took the fall hey, for me. Look what I, I think he didn't have Poppy on his back. And on the ruined laborer's bridge is something very interesting. We're going to switch in Percival right now. At least I'm realizing that I have very good luck. Yeah, just now. Uh, I'm realizing that I have very good luck because I have loved pretty much every single driver blade combination I've had up to this point. Um, Finch was pretty bad, Electra was pretty bad, but I got them out of the way early and that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to get as many shield hammers out of the way before I could. Uh, Cause early on it really doesn't matter what you're using at all. And later on it only matters a little bit if you're go actually going out for unique monsters and side quests. Uh, but beyond that, there's the fact that Agate, even though yes, it does kind of suck having a great axe on Nia, there's the fact that she is outclassed. She is not as good as another support axe that's in the game. And there's some really powerful axes out there that can be pulled from random core crystals. It's nice that we had it be Agate and not have the misfortune of having somebody better stuck on Nia who she really wouldn't be good at using. 
Plus that support effect, it gives a lot more value to her using Agate than she would have had otherwise if it was a, just a really strong axe. Plus with Nia, we do get an honest to goodness topple art when that's the thing Agate wants the most. It's been remarkably lucky thus far. It is something good. The Nopon Pioneer Spring was a place that Percival wanted to visit for his char. We got assassination leveled up from that. My specialty. I don't know if you should be saying that. As we rest in the hot springs to relax after a job well done, with the native wildlife, no less, and looking at our dreams, let's reward Agate for a job well done. She likes artwork. The tales on Adenian Bay sculptures are just the cutest. I'm excited just by looking at it. How exactly does this wear off in two hours anyway? Does Nia just stare at it so hard that she eats holes through it? I skip travel back to town and I realize, man, there's no drink store in the desert. Whoever would open up one around here would make a killing. Agate likes drinks. Mmm, tasty. And her favorite item is la awfuls! <laughs> Les Awfuls. I love the way that play depicts war. <laughs> it's Le Awfuls, not Les Awfuls. It's not like they're being less Awfuls. Uh, okay, I, okay, 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 okay. The side of me that took French in high school is showing. <laughs> That's, I love this thing though, and I'm happy it got into at least one voice line. Thank you, Agate. She has another favorite item that is purchased in Alba Cavendish, the fish and herb broth, but I don't have a Merc mission for that yet. Well, we've gotten to see everything related to Agate except her level four special. We could change that. Oh, whoa, these two guys are going at it here on this cliff side. <laughs> That's kind of dangerous. Uh, the one on the left chickened out. He's the loser by de facto according to the laws of nature. Just do what we always do. Tora and Can I get a level four special off of these guys? That I don't know. Really Whoa! She got kicked in the face! What is it with Nia getting smacked so hard she goes flying? Yes! Barely did it! Barely did it! Had to fight all four of them and we did it! Crotch shot two! Driver can shatter any will. How about this? A scout. Am I bad? I'm bad. Masterful. Oh, you bad, all right. We just decimated the entire ecosystem around this watering hole so that we could bathe our sweaty feet in it. Oh my gosh, that was really good. That's Agate's level four special, Invincible Moldavite. It's ether base, a seven hit combo. It has 40% greater critical chance, it has blow down, and it does, yep, more increased damage to toppled enemies. It's definitely the name of her game. We've come very far. In fact, if I can show the map, here's where we are in the upper level. And here's where we're going on the lower level. We're right around up here or so. We're getting close to our destination. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles 2, we pass through the lower level and find that old factory that we're headed to. See you guys then.